Today I'm working on a 10 inch F10 chief and uh, this is the layout of the optical design. It has a 10 inch primary, uh, secondary fold mirror, and two correcting lenses. But more specifically I'm working on the lenses, or rather actually one lens, because I can use off the shelf lenses from Newport Optics. Here is a better close-up of the two correcting lenses, which are tilted towards each other. Um, but this tilting uh, also means that they have to be separated from each other, and that separation causes a small amount of chromatic aberration in the system. Not a lot. I mean, um, the D, F, and G lines are still within the area disc uh, size. But if you include all the wavelengths from 400 to 750, in the visible range. Uh, there's other wavelengths fall outside the area disk, which I show in the spot diagram on the right hand side there. And if you really want to tweak it up uh, the best, you can modify um, one of the radiuses so that uh, you correct the system for chromatic aberration. So the first thing you want to do is to check the lenses. Um, you can check them against themselves since uh, their plus or minus uh, focal lengths have the same radius. You can contact them together um, with monochromatic light and uh, that's what I did in this picture here. This is the concave checked against the convex surface. Uh, even though they're anti-reflection coated you can still see the um, the rings and uh, you can. Uh, you have to be careful that you don't scratch them. And make sure that everything's nice and clean. Um, you can also um, decenter the lenses and, and tell which part might have a, a defect. And on this view here, you can see a um, slight turned edge. It's actually on the concave side, which is what we're going to regrind anyway. And while you're doing it, you should also check the the. Um, flat sides of each lens too to make sure they're okay. You're allowed to have rings of power, that's okay, but you, all the rings, if you have rings, should be perfect circles and not any wiggles in the, in, the, in the circles, so to speak. We want to be able to measure the radius and um, this is what I, this is my spherometer for measuring radius. I have a Mitsutoya gauge, it's good down to a micron and I have uh, three ball feet which uses uh, six millimeter sapphire balls glued onto some cap screws and a ruby tip on my indicator. Um, I've already positioned this so that it fits just inside the diameter of my Newport lenses. So um, I want to make sure that I zero it out. And zero, zero it out and then I'll take a reading on my on my Newport lens, concave side, and I'm reading minus 0.963 millimeters. So now I take uh, this and plug it into my spreadsheet. Uh, it's an Excel spreadsheet that's uh, uh, shown here, and uh, it, it calculates the feet diameter and it calibrates it for for this radius and according to New, Newport's catalog this radius is supposed to be 258.4 millimeters so uh, that's now calibrated and now we need to calculate what the actual sag is after we grind it. Here you see a screenshot of my Excel program and on line 2 uh, we enter uh, minus 258.4 for the radius of the um, the Newport lens, minus for concave. And then on line 3 we enter uh, the uh, radius of the balls on my spherometer in inches, which is 0.2362 or 3 millimeter radius for 6, di 6 millimeter diameter balls. Then on line 6 we enter the sag that we measure which is minus 963.963 uh, 963 minus for concave 
and then then the that's that calibrates the uh, the spirometer. So then on line ten we enter the, uh, our measured sag or what we want our sag to be in this case, and at uh, minus 0.898. It gives us a radius of in inches minus 10.898, which is um, which is what I want. What's we what we want to shoot for? So um, once we've done that, um, need to make a, a lap and a correction lap, and um, I took a chunk of glass and ground uh, generated a curb on it. Like I did in my previous videos, to the sag that I, I've computed, and then I made a plaster cast of that. I just took some tape around it and poured some plaster, let it dry, varnished it, and then I added some uh, uh, pieces of pennies. I took a penny and, with a cold chisel, chisel cut it into four pieces, and I epoxy used those on here. Another thing you could do, you could take a microscope slide glass and then to cut it up into small squares, epoxy it on. Um, but pennies uh, wear a little bit better than, than glass. You notice my, my um, glass is a little bit larger than my, my part, which, which is what you want to do. You could also take two pieces of glass and just grind them together too. Uh, there's different ways you can do it. Here you see me grinding my uh, correction lap against my uh, penny lap. Uh, the penny lap is the correction lap, but I'm uh, grinding the two together. Um, I taped the, the glass to, to the bottom and made a little um, uh, holder uh, that I taped to the back of the, my plaster lap. Um, started out with 40 micron grit and then went on to 20 and then finally 9 microns. Uh, penny lap doesn't change very quickly so it needs to be fairly close to the right radius before you start grinding or it'll take a while to, to grind. With my correction lap finished now to the right sag I'm ready to start on my lens and I mount it on a holder with three tabs of double sided tape as I've shown in the picture here. Um, it's a 3M tape and you have to be careful that you, you get everything on center so that when it r runs on the spindle it doesn't run out. Now I have my lens mounted on my holder and there's not a whole lot of run out so that's good. I'm going to start with um, 20 micron and I'm going to have the, my correction penny correction lap on top and work it by hand and I may have to go coarser with the grit later but I'm going to start out with 20 microns and on a slow speed I'm going to start working it by hand Since I'm going to be going flatter, the curve will start grinding on the edge in first. And to be sure that I don't introduce wedge, I'm going to be sure that the, the ring that I get is, is equal all the way around the edge. Shouldn't take a whole lot of grinding to do this. So there's just a, maybe even a minute grinding with 20 microns. You can see the uh, frosted edge where it's starting around the edge. Um, but the thing important to, to, to be careful of is make sure your, your edge is even all the way around. Here's my lens after about 15 minutes of grinding on 20 micron, almost complete to the center there. You probably want to check the sag every five minutes or so. Make sure you don't uh, overshoot your, your goal. Um, you should probably also want to check the wedge and here's a picture of my wedge gauge. Just a couple of large um, nuts 
hot melt glued to a, a plate and then three smaller uh, cap nuts uh, glued down that it, uh, the lens rests on and my indicator setting on top of one of the, the cap nuts. Um, you can measure it right through the, um, the packing tape, uh, pretty simple. And um, I made up a, a polishing lap, I just poured it right on top of my um, correction lap and um, polished uh, the lens uh, uh, shown in this uh, the stroke here. This is the stroke that I'm using on my machine. Um, I would definitely not recommend the lens be polished on the bottom. Um, with oversized lap like I'm doing it here, the um, radius uh, really doesn't change much. Uh, if the lap were the same size, it would, it would go steeper on you and uh, you want to keep the radius uh, right where you uh, ground it. Once I got the lens polished, um, since it's concave, I can check it with a Ronke tester. Just needs to be a miniature version, like I shown here. Need to make sure that the separation between the, the image and the the LED is, is kept as small as possible. And look for straight bands. I had, took a picture here of the um, part while I was figuring it. I had to do a little bit of uh, hand work when I was finished polishing it to tweak it back up to a good sphere. They say Earth is headed for disaster, a cataclysmic world catastrophe. Cause the temperature on Earth has started rising, and we've watched it rise at least a whole degree. They say we're making too much greenhouse gases from our cars and planes and cattle industry. But I ain't worried Al is gonna save us as he rides around in his Hummer SUV. They say the polar claps have started melting, but it doesn't sound so serious to me. When the ocean waters finish rising, I'll have a beachfront house in Clarksville, Tennessee. I need to calculate my carbon footprint, like Al does when he flies his Gulfstream jet. I simply need to buy some carbon credits, and we can get them off your internet. Help us out to sign the Kyoto Treaty As hurricanes grow stronger on the seas And it's bound to cause some pain We'll have to walk or take a train And a vegetarian life for you and me They say the polar caps have started melting, but it doesn't sound so serious to me. For when the ocean waters finish rising, I'll have a beachfront house in Clarksville, Tennessee. For when the ocean waters finish rising, I'll have a beachfront house in Clarksville, Tennessee.